Guys, it is a day that I have been waiting for for quite some time. We're gonna be picking up a toy today. Everything's already been done and we're gonna go pick up a tractor today. And why this is such a big deal to me is because I am somebody that is extremely passionate about habitat management, hunting, all that stuff. As you can see, you know, in this picture, I'm wearing camo, fishing, hunting in the blind in November with my son when he was like six months old. Um, big bucks with my son and my wife. I mean, it's just one of those things. Like, it's just, I'm so passionate about that stuff. And the one piece that I have not had to add to my habitat management objectives belt is a tractor that can do all the things that I need it to do for habitat management. I do have my late grandfather's tractor back there with the tarp on it currently. As incredible as that piece of equipment is, in my heart. Versatility wise, it's just not the same as having a smaller hydrostatic transmission operated tractor with a loader with four wheel drive that's able to get through small spaces, till that can use a belly mow or stuff like that. I mean, yes, you can get lots done with that if you get all the old school implements and you keep fixing it every time it has an issue. You can make it work, no doubts. And there's lots of guys that do that and my hat's off to you guys, literally my hat's off right now, because it takes a lot of patience to work with that old equipment on a very regular basis and have to constantly fix it, replace shear pins, and all the small stuff that just goes wrong with those things just little by little. Do they run forever? That is, that is a fact they do, but they still just have certain quirks and features about them that are just not as ideal for day-to-day -day functionality for the stuff that I need it to be. And also my wife is gonna be able to use this thing for some of her little homesteading operation. I don't know if you can see her little barn over there. Like she's got chickens and horses and stuff like that. And you know, with moving manure, rolling the pasture, stuff like that, it'll just kind of make that easier. I've got a lot of driveway, which I never had before, which means that driveway maintenance is more crucial than it's ever been in our lives. I mean, just a lot of projects around here that I would use it for. I couldn't pass up the deal I got on this thing. I was looking for like older Kubota BX tractors that were 10 to 15 years old, you know, great tractors, just older, because that's kind of the size frame that I was gonna go for. And you know, even the old ones up here with a thousand to 1500 hours, you want anywhere from nine grand to 12 grand, 14 grand, like depending on hours, and depending on condition. And I'm just like, that's just crazy. So I'm not gonna fully reveal what I did end up going with, but let's just say it's a brand new unit with brand new implements and the deal I got on it was wicked. And I'll explain how I got such a great deal once we pick up this tractor and bring it back. But on another note, we are going to be checking the fluids on the old Ram 1500 here, pulling it forward, because currently this is our best option for towing if I plan on taking the wife and kids with me, which, I was just gonna go solo and take the first and that was my goal for today because I love driving that truck. The towing capability of that truck is just like, it's just, the amount of torque is just ridiculous. So it's, it's effortless. The options were either my old Ram 1500 or my wife's 01 24 valve, which is totally capable with power to be able to pull, but the ride quality with the little kids and the increased noise with the little kids and the axle dump, you know, it's not, as ideal and so we're gonna actually cram the kiddos in the back seat of this truck today we're gonna check all the fluids because i haven't driven this thing on the roadways in several months now we're gonna check all the fluids get this thing pulled up a little bit i think my radio fuse blue so i don't currently have any like music or video there for the kids and so i'm going to check the fuse make sure it's good and then uh assuming it's not because the radio is not kicking on now i will replace it and then we will Go grab the trailer and get on our way. So I'm gonna try to make a long story as short as possible. The tractor I'm going to pick up, it's a smaller tractor, but with all the attachments that I'm also buying through this dealership, technically it would overload my smaller trailer by just four or 500 pounds. As much as I think it'll be fine for the one hour trip, I asked to borrow a 20 foot trailer. Go figure, I just sold mine. I asked to borrow a 20 foot trailer just for the one trip to get it up home before testing the tractor and all the attachments on my trailer just to play it safe. And I get over here and this was gonna be like my testing drive with this truck here before actually making the trip, which is just a 25 minute trip over here to grab this. And I have a sticking brake caliper on this side. So that being said, I need to pop the wheel off 
jack the truck up, try to get this caliper to free up here so it's no longer seized. This is fun. Luckily, luckily, whenever I do any kind of trips like this, I always go prepared. I've got copper brake line, fittings, WD-40 coolant, oil, all my tools, jumpers. I got everything I need, so I'm going to just pull some stuff out. And hopefully, this is a simple fix. Now, if it's good to go for sure, I don't know, but at least for now, it's no longer seized up, but we will see. I took the caliper and everything off, and then I took the slides out and cleaned them up, brushed them down, greased them, stuck them back in, made sure the piston tried to compress it a little bit to see if maybe just need a broken free, and... Uh, I did take the fluid reservoir cap off in the meantime while I did that, just in case there was some air pushing through, but we will give it a test here and see if it works. So what I'm gonna do now is just take it around the block, use the brakes a little more than normal, get on back here to my uncle's place and take a little bit of that WD-40 and give it a little squirt on the brakes there just to see if they smoke all up again from getting too hot or what i did that test when i got it back because i got out and i could smell brakes real bad and i thought well maybe it's just because i haven't driven the truck in four or five months you know maybe that's maybe that's all so i didn't think much about it and then what i ended up doing was spraying a little bit of wd-40 on the passenger side and it did a little just a little hiss like a little tss but it was totally fine. And then it, it didn't smoke or nothing, that was it. And then I went to the driver's side, which is the one I just worked on. And I gave it a little spray and it just smoked and hissed real loud and it was bubbling and foaming. I mean, it was it was blazing hot apparently. So, um, and even the wheel, like to the touch, to the back of my hand, I mean, you could, it was just, it was hot. The other side was not. So I'm gonna take it around the block here, see if it's all good and get back and give it a test. So we're abusing these brakes here, doing some abnormally hard braking and whatnot. And I even keep a fire extinguisher real close by, a brand new one, just in case. Just in case, because I'd hate to see this thing burn down on the side of the road. This is exactly what I was afraid of. Still smoking like crazy. And here's the passenger side. Nothing. I'm supposed to go pick up my tractor today. And, uh, and now I'm having brake issues with the truck that it was gonna take. I was originally gonna take the first gen, not gonna lie, which might end up being the alternative. I'm trying to think through the options here of what makes sense because I'm supposed to be already have left town 45 minutes ago to go get this thing because it's over an hour drive. And of course, this is not part of the plan. The plan was, you know, come on over here, not have any issues, of course, and then go on about our day. But now I'm covered in dirt and grease and rust pieces. Haven't been doing a whole lot of recording because I'm just trying to get this done because I'm hours behind now. But I did get the new caliper installed, pads, uh, it's still the same rotor. There's a little bit of marking on it, but this was a brand new rotor when I put it on. It doesn't look warped. Like for the most part, it's just, it's got a little bit of that scratching going on, but new pads, new caliper, new banjo bolt with crush washers. And I did crack that fitting here. I was able to reach the brake pedal with my hand and hit it until fluid started to come out and the brake got real firm and just crack it tight. I hope this is it, but we should be good to go. We're on our way again. We're gonna run around the block, be a little bit abusive with the brakes pull back in and do the WD-40 smoke test on the brakes. Is that the proper way to test if it's still seizing up and getting hot? I don't know. I'm sure there's gonna be some comments down below that are gonna inform me of either that's a brilliant idea or that is an absolutely horrible idea and you should never do that. 
but we will see how this goes. And assuming I pull back in with the new caliper installed, the new pads, same old rotor though. When I say same old rotor, it was replaced in the fall. And for the most part, it's not, it's not real bad warped or anything. I mean, there's a little bit of, you know, lines and scratches on it from the brake season up, but it's not bad at all. So I'm hoping that that's still fine for now until I can get this tractor and back to the house and then I'm gonna have to just take another day and replace the caliper and everything on the other side. One of those things that once you start replacing stuff for me, you gotta do it, you just gotta do it in pairs. Otherwise it just kinda, just seems weird not to, but hopefully we get back, do the smoke test and they're not overheating. I would say you guys aren't gonna believe this, but at this point, I think it's pretty believable. My brakes seem to be good. They they got a little hazy and whatnot, but both sides were doing the same thing, just about the same amount, which isn't near as much as it was the last time. Granted, brakes are gonna get hot regardless. I mean, when you use them a bunch, they're gonna, they're gonna get warm. That's kind of what happens. But the first couple times that I had to test it with that bad caliper, it was way worse than it was supposed to be. But what I was gonna say was, I go to hook up the trailer and my stinking trailer lights and brakes didn't work because the wiring harness for the trailer stuff was not grounded apparently. The ground was not onto the frame. So I had to create a ground and ground the wiring harness so that my lights and stuff would work. <laughs> but we're on the road, headed back to the house. We are on the road. We got the trailer. I checked the brakes when I got back to my house and they did not appear to be abnormally hot at all. No brake fluid leaks around where I had to bleed the lines. We got the lovely wife. We got the Martianator. Marshall, say cheese. And we got the little laney bug over there. We are, we are on route and hopefully we don't have any other issues right now we're maintaining about 2800 rpm 60 miles per hour good oil pressure good coolant temps everything else looking good we have overdrive off and cruising at about 60 so if we can maintain this it's gonna it's gonna slow us down a little bit but we should be safe and be there in about an hour or less here it is now i'm gonna get it off the trailer here but the truck did good it did good. I got to pull forward just a little bit so it'll relieve the rear end of the trailer so I can flip this ramp down all the way. And I'll get it pulled into the garage, get some light on it, and show you around. We got the Land Pride Tiller, the 60 inch mower, the 22 horse Coyote CS2210. And for the most part, this is going to fit all the needs that I have day to day around here. My number one reason for wanting the piece of equipment in the first place is for property management and like deer management stuff specifically like with food plots and mowing off clover plots and when i have to cut stuff down and retail every spring and fall for the most part that's what i'm going to use it for and obviously i'm going to use it for moving some dirt i got to fix a creek crossing back in our property that currently it's manageable with an atv but i'm not going to be able to take the tractor across it until it gets fixed because it's just too steep um, and so I'm going to need this bucket and loader and stuff to grade it down, put some culverts down, put some dirt and rock down, which there's all that back there in the creek bed. And I got, yeah, just plenty of small things that I'm going to use it for that, yeah, bigger tractor would be nice. But for the most part, the level of difficulty of most of the jobs I'm going to use it for is not very high. And so I just didn't see a huge need at the current moment for anything bigger than this looking for one of these for so long and for the most part i wasn't gonna buy a new one i was gonna go with a used like bx series like an older model and with the price they got me on this thing since it was a 2021 that's still brand new it's only got 1.2 hours on our runtime they pretty much said bottom line is the 23 models are on their way in already and they cannot have a model that's two models back two years back still sitting on the lot at full price because it's just not gonna sell with all the new stuff on the lot so they gave me a wicked discount on this thing. I mean, like for the most part, like it's, I got basically the tiller and the mower for free compared to what I would have had to pay for this tractor 
when it originally was released brand new in 21. So essentially, if I were to buy a 2022 or 23 right now without the discounts on it, to sum it up, with the discounts, I saved enough money to get the 60 inch belly mower and the tiller for the same price as if I would have just gotten the tractor with the loader on it with no discount. I mean, it's it was pretty wild. And for the 22 and 23 models, they're like, we're not running any kind of discount anywhere near what they were giving me on this. They're like, it's kind of one of those rare things. Like sometimes we just don't sell all of our inventory from a year or two ago. And when that happens, we get to a certain point where it's either we either discount it extremely heavy to where there's a reason to buy this over a 22 or three, or it just sits because why would you pay full price for this? If it's a 21 model, even though it's still brand new when there's a 20, 23 model sitting on the lot, it just doesn't make sense unless it was discounted. And in which case the discount was pretty freaking ridiculous. And I'm pretty pumped about it. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah? Are you gonna get off of this thing at all tonight? Huh? And in terms of resale value, I know there's people that are biased to brands for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes it's parts and availability and service centers and how close they are. In my case, I've got a Coyote dealer less than two miles away. I bought this one from about an hour and 30 minutes away because the deal was just so good, I wasn't gonna pass it up. But not only that, for resale value is a big reason why a lot of guys buy certain brands. They're like, okay, these brands sell years down the road for a lot more. And when I say that, I'm talking about like the Kubota BX tractors. Like when you're looking at 05s and 6s and 7s, like even the old ones with a thousand hours, people still want 12 grand for the things with just the loader on them. And as long as they're in good condition, that's assuming which is just absolutely crazy. But when I saw the price on this one new with all the discounts, I was like, okay, so what is a tractor that's a 2019, 19, 18, 17, you know, with a few hundred hours on it? Like, what are those going for, you know, to see like, is this still a good buy? Like, are, do they resell well? And from what I was able to find, at least within a couple hours of my area, I saw a 2019 and a 2020 and a couple of other older used models as well. And they were just like, so, so pricey still, even compared to what I paid for this one. I mean, I sat, I found probably four or five within an hour that were either a 2020 or 2019 or an 18 that had three to 600 hours on them. And they were still going for 11 to $13,000, which in looking at some of those prices, I got a better deal on this one new than I would have been able to buy some of those used ones, which is pretty, pretty crazy. And I still get the full six years and unlimited hours of warranty. So it was just, it was just too good to pass. <laughs> My original plan before all the problems with the truck was going to be to get this thing back today and actually do a small project that I had in mind that I could easily have done in the daylight that I would have originally had, had everything going smooth. But having been three or four hours behind, by the time we got home, the sun was just going down and it was getting dark. So I will pick you guys back up here tomorrow, not just with this tractor, but with some other stuff. I got some other stuff I'd like to film also. And uh, it's, it's gonna be pretty cool. If you guys haven't done so yet, feel free to enter to win our 1990 12 valve Cummins first gen diesel. That truck is up for grabs right now. And every $1 is 20 entries towards winning only until Sunday night and 28 entries are over. And the giveaway itself is ending on March 19th. So if you look at your phone calendar or whatever you get close by, that is coming to an end very rapidly. And so if you want to grab some entries, get in while you can before the giveaway ends. We will catch you guys in the next video. See ya.